Today in the workshop, it's part four of our series on building a real robot, and today we're looking at wheels. We'll examine different types of wheels and different mounting arrangements you can use on your robot. I'll also show you the wheels I'm using in my DB1 robot. Get ready to roll, and welcome to the workshop. Hello and welcome to the workshop and to the fourth installment on building the DB1 robot. Now, this is the last time for a while that we're going to be looking at a mechanical aspect of the robot. After this, we are going to start focusing on the electronics of the robot. But there is one more mechanical element we need to talk about. Before I do, though, I want to show you how DB1 has evolved since you last saw him or her. I've got the tower back on it. And one thing I've done is I've mounted the plexiglass plate that I'm going to be using to hold all the drive electronics. And this is actually what we're going to be working with the next time we get together. Now, one thing you can see is that I've mounted this plate on top of a couple of spacers. And what that has done is it's elevated it and given me more room to put batteries underneath. And now I've got about five centimeters of space. That's about two inches of height in order to place a battery pack. So that will probably come in very useful. Another thing that you may notice is that my circle is up over here. This, of course, is going to be a turntable for a number of sensors that I'm going to be able to rotate. And uh, I talked about the circle last time, got a number of amusing comments about my inability to find circles here in Canada. I suspect that if I designed this around the maple leaf, I might have had a better chance of doing it. But at any rate, the circle is mounted right now, and we will be getting to that in a while because we're going to be doing the navigation and base unit before we get up to the sensors and all that stuff. But at any rate, so much about circles. However, today's video is actually about something that is a bit like a circle. We're going to talk about wheels today. Now, wheels may not seem like the most exciting thing in the world. If they do seem like the most exciting thing in the world, well, congratulations, you must be a wheel manufacturer. But other than that, they are an important aspect of building a robot. Now, of course, you don't need to use wheels for a robot. You can use tank tracks, you can use legs, etc. on a robot. But my design uses wheels, and I suspect a lot of your designs do too. So we do need to talk about wheels. There are different types of wheels. You may have noticed that I've got these funny looking wheels on the back of my robot. These are called Omni wheels. I will be discussing those. And also, there are aspects about wheels. Their diameter, their circumference, obviously that relates to how far the robot is going to go on one rotation of the wheel. It also has to do with the height of the robot. If you're building an outdoor robot, you probably want large wheels because it may have to go over uneven terrain. An indoor robot like mine can use smaller wheels. The width of the wheel is also important. So there are a number of different aspects to the wheels. There are different types of tires. There's a little bit more than meets the eye. So what we're going to do is look at a number of different types of wheels. I'm going to show you the wheels I'm using here on DB1 and how I've mounted them. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about these Omni wheels because Omni wheels actually open you up to doing a number of very interesting designs. So let's get started by looking at wheels. So let's examine some of the parameters that you'll need to determine when selecting wheels for your robot. The first parameter, of course, is the wheel size. The size will determine the speed when coupled with the motor and also determines the ground clearance. The width of the wheel will determine the amount of traction it has and the maximum load that it can support. The wheel or tire tread will determine the surface or surfaces that the robot can travel upon. And the wheel type will determine the degree or degrees of movement. Let's look at a few common wheel types now. Standard wheels are the most common type of wheels and they're the ones that you're most familiar with. They have two degrees of freedom, forward and backwards. They come in a wide range of sizes with a number of different mounting arrangements. They can be used as either drive wheels 
or as idler wheels. They have a wide selection of tire treads for a number of different surfaces. They can be used both indoors and outdoors. Caster and ball wheels are orientable wheels. They can be used as idler wheels or they can simply be used for balance. These type of wheels are most suitable for indoor designs. Mechanum wheels are multi-directional wheels. They can be used as either drive or idler wheels. Mechanum wheels have a number of rollers mounted at an angle, usually about 45 degrees. In many designs, you will require different left and right wheels when using mechanum wheels. These type of wheels can be used indoors or outdoors. Omni wheels are wheels with rollers at a 90 degree angle. They have four degrees of freedom, forward, reverse, left, and right. They can be used as either drive or idler wheels. Omni wheels are best for indoor use. Another consideration for wheels is how they are going to be mounted. A simple axle mount is the easiest for most hobbyist robots. If you're designing a robot for outdoor use, you may require a suspension. The simplest type of steering is called skid steering, and this is used on most simple robot designs, including the design that I'm making. More complex designs could require something like rack and pinion steering. So I want to give you a look at some of the wheels that I purchased for the DB1 robot. Now one of them I didn't end up using. Now the first wheel is basically a wheel. This is a 4 inch diameter wheel. It's a very standard robotics wheel and it is mounted onto a hub. These little devices are called hubs and in turn the hub is screwed onto a shaft. It's got a little mounting screw over here and the shaft of course has got a spacer and a bearing on it and this couples to my motor using a coupler and this is my drive wheel. This inch diameter wheel and it's a nice wheel it's got a nice surface it's rubberized and it's fairly wide so that it can handle a lot of load on it now this I'm sure you recognize as being a caster now I didn't end up using this in the final design I originally wanted to use casters casters are inexpensive and they can certainly do the job for a free rolling wheel however casters can also cause a little bit of a problem in navigating your robot because casters kind of tend to have a mind of their own. Now on some surfaces they're just fine but if you're going over something like let's say a throw rug when the caster catches the edge of it it can often go off to the side and it will cause the robot chassis to jerk to one side or another so it can be a little bit difficult to control a robot that uses a caster. Nonetheless they are a good choice they're relatively inexpensive and this is a nice heavy duty caster that's actually made for robotics use but I've decided not to use it so if anyone needs a couple of unused casters really cheap just let me know. Now I've taken this apart this is a Omni wheel which I've actually pulled apart because it's two Omni wheels. Now the Omni wheel is an interesting device. I like this because it's the same diameter. It's four inches in diameter so it was very easy to align and mount with the other wheel. But the advantage of Omni wheels as a free rolling wheel or as a drive wheel because you can use them for both is that not only can it turn in this direction but an Omni wheel can also go this direction because of all these rollers on it. Now what I've done in my design is I've used this little spacer and I've placed two Omni wheels and I stagger them like this so that the two wheels have rollers that are always contacting the ground and plus it makes it a lot wider which will support a lot more weight. Omni wheels can also offer you a number of interesting configurations for your wheels. You don't have to use the one that I've used. In fact there are several different configurations you can use. Some of them using the Omni wheels as drive wheels as well. So I wanted to take a look at a few of those right now. 
So now that we've looked at some wheels, let's talk about the mounting arrangements we can use for our wheels. Now there are a number of mounting arrangements you can use for robot wheels, ranging from very simple arrangements to some that are absolutely bizarre. And we'll go over a few of those in a moment. Before we do, let's take a look at a couple of small robots. You might even recognize these because these are robots that I have used before on the uh, Dronebot workshop, this very tiny little robot robots. Now this one over here is probably the simplest arrangement there is. There's two motors and there's a caster at the back over here and that's all there is to it. This is a very simple arrangement yet it does work pretty well and certainly don't eliminate that for building a bigger robot with a bigger caster like the one that I showed you. You could very easily build something like this. Another arrangement that was common on the small robots is the this one here, and this is the four-wheel drive uh, system. There are four powered wheels over here. Now this has some advantages in terms of extra torque. It does, however, also have some disadvantages in terms of its ability to turn smoothly. So there are trade-offs for every different wheel arrangement. Now with our robot, I've got Omni wheels on the back. And when you use Omni wheels, that opens up a number of exciting possibilities for arranging the wheels. Now I've chosen a very basic arrangement, but there are some other ones as well. So let's take a look at some of the arrangements that we can use for mounting Omni wheels. The first mounting arrangement we'll examine is the one that I'm using on DB1. This consists of two motors driving two standard wheels, as well as two Omni wheels being used as idler wheels. This is very simple and inexpensive when compared to other mounting arrangements. It's quite easy to control this type of an arrangement. There is, however, some drag when the robot is turning. There is a very low drag going forward. Using the same wheels and motors, we can come up with this alternative arrangement. This is also simple and inexpensive and very easy to control. This has the advantage of having the drive motors in the very center of the chassis. There is no drag on turns with this arrangement. However, there is some drag going forward due to the Omni wheels. Another arrangement uses four motors. Again, two standard wheels at the front and two Omni wheels at the back. This is more expensive due to the additional motors and also has a higher power requirement because of the additional motors. However, this design will have a higher torque. Once again, it will have some drag on the turns and a very low drag going forward. With this arrangement, we're using four motors and four Omni wheels. This is the most expensive design because of the number of parts required. It has a high power requirement because of the four motors and a very high torque because of the four motors. This arrangement has less drag on the turns because of the use of Omni wheels and it has a low drag going forward. This may be the most unique arrangement of them all. It uses four motors and four Omni wheels. It is a complex layout. And this is the hardest layout to control. Note that in this layout, there is no actual forward, reverse, left, or right. This arrangement has no drag whatsoever on turns. This is the only arrangement that will allow you to make a 90 degree movement if you need to. The power requirement for this arrangement is not as high as you might suspect, as generally only two motors will be on at the same time. Because only two motors are being used simultaneously, there is no appreciable torque increase. In addition, the extra weight of the unused motors needs to be taken into consideration. 
All right, that takes care of wheels, and also for a while it takes care of working on the mechanical aspects of the robot. After this, we are gonna start working on the electronics. So the next time we get together, we're gonna to be working on the base unit. I'm gonna show you some of the electronics that's going on there. We'll mount it onto the base unit, and then we'll start working on the motor controller. We'll start working on sensors, and of course, we'll work on programming it so that the robot can actually do something. Now if you need more information about wheels there's an article that accompanies this video. You will find the link below the video to the article on the DroneBotWorkshop.com website. If you have not yet subscribed to my newsletter please do so because I'm going to be making some announcements about additional material available for those interested in constructing the DB1 robot. I'll also be making an announcement about a new method I'm coming up with for you to suggest Suggest what videos and topics you would like me to cover in the regular DroneBot workshop videos and articles. And of course, if you are not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, well, what's stopping you? Because subscribing to the channel will let you know when new videos are coming out. You'll be the first to know about them. And we're going to be doing a lot of videos on the regular DroneBot workshop videos that cover aspects of designing the robot. In fact, the next video that we're doing on the DroneBot workshop most definitely is something that is involved in the robot. And I'm not going to tell you what that is right now because, I mean, we need some surprises in our life, right? So until the next time we get together. Please take care of yourselves. Please get rolling with all of your wheels, and I hope to see you very soon back here in the DroneBot workshop. Goodbye for now.